game between Drexel and VCU starting with the Rams. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to push the ball, get some easy points. Drexel is a very stingy team, leads the league in three-point defense and uh, ranked in the country as well. We're going to have to also rebound. Drexel actually out-rebounds their opponents by 13 rebounds wow. a game. And so with VCU at a minus six, that could be disastrous tonight for the Rams. As far as Drexel is going to go, they don't want to get into a running gun game with us. They want to get it down to their big men and, and pound it in on us. And they're going to attack the glass. They're leading. They're third in the country in offensive rebounding, Greg. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of players you're going to need to keep an eye on here tonight for both the Rams and those Drexel Dragons, starting with Drexel. Well, for, for Drexel, it's going to be Chris Fouch. He is an outstanding sophomore, had 20 points five times already this year and, and just can absolutely light it up. For Ed Nixon, it's not so much what he's going to do on the offensive line uh, side of the ball. It's going to be how is he going to stop Chris Fouch. That's why Ed Nixon is so important in this game. Ed's definitely in a bit of a slump right now, hoping that uh, he breaks out of it tonight. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game. For the Drexel Dragons, as you mentioned, it's uh, Chris Faust, and then it's Derek Thomas, Gerald, um, Daryl McCoy, Sammy Gibbons, who seems like he's been around forever, and uh, Franz Massanat, a freshman out of Ewing, New Jersey. For the VCU Rams, you're going to have Joey Rodriguez starting in the backcourt along with Ed Nixon. Javante Reddick will get the start for VCU alongside Bradford Burgess and Jamie Skeen. So for the first time in the last couple of games, Darius Theus out of the starting lineup and Javante Reddick in. Part of that has to do with the fact that they are still without the services of Toby Veal. We'll get into his status, but big start tonight for Javante Reddick, the freshman. Yeah, we're going to need his size and tenacity on the rebounding. I think Coach Smart was a little bit worried about us not being able to hang on the rebounding with, with Drexel and Therefore, insert Reddick, who's been really aggressive and shown a lot of intensity in the minutes that he's played so far this year. Yeah, he uh, only played nine minutes against uh, in the last time out against Georgia State, and that loss had three points. But he's a kid that you can really see the promise and the upside on Javante Reddick, and also the other young guy who's going to see uh, a lot of time tonight, DJ Haley, the seven-footer. Yeah, the thing with Reddick is, and, and with Haley as well, is that as a freshman, the game is so fast, Greg. And so 
every game, every minute you play, it starts to slow down a little bit as a player. And then you can start to really see the game and develop like you are when you're a senior in high school. And so the game's really fast for Javante. Let's get him some big minutes right here, and hopefully things will start to slow down. He'll be able to be the player that he really is. Usually we jump right into the tip-off, but tonight's game is also on regional TV. So uh, obviously there'll be some timeouts, and the, the pace will be slowed down just a little bit. Uh, Give us a little time to talk a little more. It, well, just <laughs> nobody really wants. We'll have to be uh, really on our game here tonight. But certainly uh, another great crowd here at the Siegel Center, and certainly they're looking for the Rams to bounce back. You take a look at the CAA schedule, and you've got a, a couple of teams at top. Mason, Hofstra, Georgia State are all at 2-0, and and then you got just a log jam. Madison's 1-1, one one. ODU, Drexel, VCU, UNC Wilmington, Delaware, all 1-1, one and, one, and then three teams at 0-2. Oh so for all the Ram fans that were kind of upset about the loss of Georgia State, you should be. It's the first time they ever lost to the Panthers. But that same Georgia State team is the one that handed JMU their loss, a JMU team that I all think is going to be a player in the conference this year. Yeah, and, you know, with the rivalry that we have so far with Drexel, it's always been a very competitive game. And Drexel picked six in the league in the preseason. VCU picked three. And Bruiser Flint having his once best starts ever at nine and three so far this year. So they're going to be looking to prove themselves. And a great road team, too, Greg. How about Drexel's road road? schedule so far this year they five got, and yeah. two on the road including a big win over number 20 louisville you know the caa has posted so many signature non-conference wins over the years and uh, drexel definitely played their part this year i mean think about it vcub ucla dell i'm a uh, drexel beat louisville i mean there were certainly a lot of signature wins by a lot of programs javante reddick is in the center circle he'll be facing off against daryl mccoy 6'9, 270 pounder he's a sophomore so a couple of young guys Ready to start here tonight. Our referees, Roger Ayers, Tim Kelly, Sean Helm, we are ready for play. Sit back, relax, and enjoy Ram, Ram basketball here on Ram Replay. McCoy tips it over to Sammy Givens, and Drexel will be on the attack first. And that is Sammy Givens, who we have seen for uh, well, he's a three-year starter. Obviously, he's been around for quite some time, and he's a guy that can drain it. Fouch is absolutely a stud as well. He's number three. We told to watch him. That's Sammy Givens trying to back down Skeen, and they called a push in the back on Skeen and he thought it was a travel on Givens. Yeah and Sean Hill has always been one of the officials that call that you know protects the player with the offensive op, on the offensive um, block and there you see it again. So it's certainly we've seen a lot of whistles early on in Ram games this year especially at home. Chris Vouch goes around halfway down and out and the Rams with a rebound and running. There's Joey Rodriguez looking to penetrate. Gives it to Skeen. Skeen thinks about a jumper, gives a rock back out to Joe. He's going to set up the play. Plenty of time on the shot clock. We're less than a minute into this one here at the Siegel Center. VCU taking on Drexel. Third CAA game for both teams. There's Ed Nixon. Nixon down to Rodriguez. Or Rodriguez down to Skeen on the block. And there's a little jumper. No good, but he draws a foul. And if you can't get the bucket, drawing the foul is the next best thing. That's right. Given bailed him out right there to, you know, giving Skeen a chance. He really had nowhere to go, but... Givens bailed him out, and it's good to try to draw a couple fouls on Givens. The less minutes he plays, the better off VCU will be. No doubt about it. Jamie Skeen coming off a 16-point performance, four rebounds in the loss to Georgia State. Jamie, of course, the leading scorer for the Rams at uh, 15 points per game. Bradford Burgess also right there at about 15 points per game, and Jamie gets the first one. So the Rams have the lead here. Skeen will drop the next one. So the Rams off to an early 2-0 lead. And we know the importance of making free throws without question. That's Givens bringing it up. Skeen beats him at half court. Givens going to give it up to Derek Thomas. Thomas. And you see a whistle, three seconds. Yeah, I, I missed it. He was, uh, he was the slot, so... Actually, it no, like, called a, um, wow a illegal screen on McCoy. Okay, it first looked like it might have been a three-second call there, but a, a cow. And, so, uh, and McCoy is not hard to miss. 6'9", <laughs> 270. <coughs> 270. 270. That cough yeah. means that add 30 pounds to that. He is a horse. Yeah, he's a, he's a big boy. He's definitely a big boy. And there's Nixon going up. Can't get it to finish. Rebound by Thomas. Both Thomas and and uh, and Fouch, boy, they're just hustlers. There's Gimmins down low, and he gets it to go. 
Yeah, Givens has always been one of those undersized post players that's been able to re that really has hurt the Rams in years past. And like you said, I think it seems like he was playing when when I was here. He's been I, I, here so he's long. still a junior. Yeah, but he, he was just started as a freshman, and that was a travel on Joey Rodriguez, and he will go to the or uh, they will turn it over to the Drexel Dragons. Givens inbounds from underneath his own basket, gives it up to Fouch. Pressure from the Rams. Corey driven it across. Gets it, Givens. And then the bucket, no good, but a foul. They're going to call that a block, and it looked like it was on Javante Reddick. It was. Yeah, Javante just didn't get there in time and also stuck up underneath the basket too far in order to draw the charge. But, you know, like we talked about, the game just needs to slow down a little bit for Javante, and so it will as he gets a few more minutes right there. Nice help side defense, just not able to get there in time. France Massanat is your free throw shooter. Mentioned out of uh, Ewing, New Jersey, and he knocks down his first three throw. Another bucket there for him. So it's 4-2 Drexel here. A little less than two minutes into this game. Rodriguez. Rams definitely looking to penetrate here early. There's Skeen down the lane, gives it up to Burgess, pulls up for the jumper. No good. Skeen rebound back out, and they're going to go foul on who? Late call, Jamie Skeen. He definitely got Givens in the back. Small of the back. He did a great job hiding it, but then when he came so clean Boy, that's from the a rebound, late, very late call right there by Sean Hall, but um, that's what it is. I don't know if we can re-rack it, but that's exactly what the call was. And Skeen's uh, Skeen got him in the small of the back. And Skeen's got to come out of the game because we're uh, a minute 58 in, and he's got two fouls. And that is a very tough break there for the Rams. Yeah, not the start we needed with Veal out, who had surgery today. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Rams almost forced a steal there on Fouch, but he recovered. There's McCoy. McCoy's going to give it up to Maserat. Masanat. He's got the rock out front. He gives it up to Derek Thomas. Thomas around to Fouch. Under 10 on the shot clock. Steal there by Javante Reddick. Great defense there by the freshman. Playing way out on the wing, he gets it. Nixon drives, dishes. Reddick misses it underneath. He was a little bit out of position. Tried to switch hands, couldn't get it to go. So it's still 4-2. Floater there, no good. DJ Haley's in the game. So again, you've got the two young freshman post players, guys that Coach Shaka Smart brought into the program. And now they're seeing significant time. He needs them to contribute here. Maybe not so much on the offensive end, but he needs maximum effort. Rodriguez, jumper, good. Got to see Joey get going early. Yeah, nice shot right there by Jerry Rodriguez, but a nice screen set by DJ Haley. Great footwork right there. Drexel can't get the ball in bounds. Timeout by Coach Flint. And Jim Bruiser gets after Sammy Givens big time because, again, he was pretty upset that he weren't able to get the rock in. So we got 16.48 uh, to go as you see a replay of Joey Rodriguez's three. And, and clearly, from an offensive standpoint, Joey Rodriguez has struggled to say the lead. He is getting healthier, and now it, it kind of makes you wonder if it's more mental, Rod. Yeah, I mean, you, get, you lose some confidence in that in that situation where you're just your mind's doing things that your body can't deliver on, and he's just had a rough go of it the last five or six games, so it's good to see him get started early. And where he also needs to get started is start on the defensive end. He's got to stop penetration. We got beat up so bad down in Georgia down in Atlanta last week or on Monday night and uh, so he got it started on the offensive end but what we really need is him to continue to stop the penetration here tonight. He had 10 points at 31 minutes in the loss at Georgia State which is good to see him get back into uh, double digits. He was held scoreless against New Hampshire but as we documented in that game he did have eight assists and no turnovers which is a win for Joey in any point guard in any league but obviously on this team that doesn't feature a superstar no main or no Sanders they need contributions from a variety of players. Joey's the point guard that needs to score. And that was Derek Thomas with a the jumper there. So it's 6-4, Drexel leading VCU at two and a half, uh, three and a half minutes into this game. Burgess on the wing, boy Bradford Burgess has been a beast lately. There's Reddick on the post, can't get it to go. Rebound McCoy, look at Reddick. He's really hustling in the early minutes here. The one thing they worry about with Reddick is just conditioning. How many minutes can he go maximum effort, Rodney? Yeah, I mean, I think he's probably a six or seven minute guy. He's a very lean guy. He's put on some good weight since he's been here. He's probably a six or seven minute guy. And with it being a TV game, 
Oh man, they're calling the wrap up with Givens, you know, wrapping up Javante, really working hard on the post right there, not able to get around because Givens had him wrapped up. I believe that's Givens' second foul. And I think you are right, so Sammy Givens will likely come out. In the meantime, the Rams get a substitution. Darius Theus comes in for Joey Rodriguez, and David Hinton is coming into the game for Javante Reddick, who I thought had a real productive first four minutes. Yeah, he did, and we talked about his conditioning. With the, and I was, the point I was getting ready to make is that the TV game will help him in this because the TV timeouts are a little longer. Great job right there by Coach Smart. Neck dead ball, timeout. He's going to be able to sit a min, um, two minutes. Absolutely, and David Hinton, always one of the first guys out on the floor prior to the game. He was tonight, always working hard, one of the hardest workers in practice. So he's out on the floor getting big minutes. Bradford Burgess, three ball, can't get it to go. Rebound, Drexel. That's uh, Darte Ruffin. So Drexel with a two-point lead. Haley going on one and one there with Ruffin, who goes high off the glass and in. Yeah, Ruffin, the freshman out of Mass. Man, looked uh, really strong on that move right there. So on the floor, you've got Theus, Rozell, Burgess, Hinton, and Reddick, and I could say with great certainty we've never seen this lineup before. Theus driving, Bucky can't get it to go, but he draws the foul. Great move there, aggressive by Theus. Yeah, it is, and also realizing that other than Rozell, you know, not a big, big scorer. And yeah, there it is, almost get it to go. So nice job there by Darius Theus, but that is gonna be our TV timeout. 15.09 to go, Drexel 8, VCU 4, quick timeout here on Ram Replay. Welcome back to Ram Replay, Drexel 8, VCU 4. This might be a good time to get Coach Shaka Smart's quote of the game, and this is a good one. Adversity is the first path to truth. A quote from Lord Byron. Certainly, the Rams have experienced a little adversity, especially coming off that loss to Georgia State. Shows character, right? Yeah, gonna have to build it somehow, and uh, you know, the Rams need to bounce back here. And, you know, they've been good at that so far, and they're playing well at home, so this is probably just what the doctor had ordered. You know, it, it's interesting. I think one of the things, as you see from the Rams, look, you know, everybody focuses on rebounding, and it was one of the uh, keys to our game. And we knew that. We knew rebounding was going to be an issue. I think what's been a bit of a disappointment, and, and this is coming from Shaka Smart and Mike Rose and Will Wade and, and the people searching the program, is they need to see some better senior leadership. They need to see the seniors, they need to see Joey Rodriguez, they need to see Brandon Rozelle, Jamie Skeen, Ed Nixon, they need to see these guys step up and lead. There's no more Eric Maynard here, you know, there's 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 no more TJ Quinn here who is, a, who is a leader. They need a guy on the floor that can take charge, show poise and confidence. Yeah, they sure do. And you know, that was somewhat hidden in the beginning because we were having so much success and playing so well. But then when the adversity comes is when you really need a leader. It's easy to be a leader when you're winning, Greg. Exactly. You know, now's the time where we need that leadership. And who's it going to be? You know, who is going to step up and, and be that leader? And I think we're still, you know, Coach Smart and his staff is pushing hard to find one and have somebody step up. But, I mean, to date, I don't think we've seen it. Do you think? Uh, no. No. And, and, and again, it's, uh, that, that's part of it. I mean, that's part of this game. So, uh, Theus makes one misses one and again Darius Theus had started the last five games did not start tonight I don't think that's so much a reflection on him is that they just needed to get another post player in there yeah. and he started Javante Reddick 
nice block there. It's kind of a combo between Theus and Hinton, but a good job as you see. Shaka Smart again. Rams nine and five, one and one in the league. So Drexel underneath their own basket, 16 on the shot clock. You see Ruffin, Ruffin gets it out to Massanat, guarded by Theus, back over to Ruffin, little one back and forth. Five on the shot clock, Fouch, long three, bingo. Yeah, and I tell you what, Fouch can straight out shoot it. He's already got thir over 33 so far this year, so he can light it up. But that was his first, first three, first points of the game there for uh, for Drexel tonight. Nixon with the basketball, 20 on the shot clock, 14-15 to go here. Rams down 11-5. to Theus looking to drive, tried to kick it out to Roz Rozelle, and they're going to call a foul here. Bruisers. He's, he's never I lacked said, emotion. If anybody ever accuses him of not being passionate about what he does. Look, he just went over there and told him to stop, and I think that's Tim Kelly. And I think Tim Kelly just went over and said, all right, Bruiser, enough. Really, you're going to tell Bruiser enough at 14.09 in the first half? Oh, that's just going to get That's Bruiser more, Flint, yeah, man. Yeah, we're going to more round up. That, that's part of the James show. James Bruiser Flint. He's hilarious. We were laughing today. We were like, what's the over-under on technicals tonight for Bruiser? And they said .5. I'm like, oh, I'll take the over. He's getting one at least. Yeah. Javante Reddick. Good look. Good play. Rams with a nice possession there. It's 11 to 7. Good trap there. And already, Rams starting to show some pressure and rattle this Drexel offense. 13.45 to go. Drexel 11, VCU 7. Wow, and there's that turnover. That possession was doomed from the start for Drexel. They were out of sync because of the Rams' pressure. Joey Rodriguez with the basketball back in the game. It's Rodriguez, Rozell, Nixon, Reddick, and Burgess. Rodriguez. Back out to Brad, shot no good. He's a little off, a little off here, but obviously Brad for Burgess has done a fantastic job of scoring in bunches this season for the Rams. Drexel still by four. There's Fouch, drives, switches hands, it's good. Well, you've seen him do it from deep three, you've seen him do it inside. And there's Bradford Burgess switching hands underneath for the reverse layup. So Bradford Burgess is on the board. Thirteen nines your score. Fouch being guarded by Nixon, and we mentioned that again. Need a big defensive effort from Ed Nixon tonight. Trying to clamp down on Chris Fouch, who's averaging about 20 points per game. Fouch, another three ball, no good. Rebound, Rozelle. Rams are running as two hit the deck. Rodriguez gives it up to Rozelle. Long three, too deep, but a rebound by Burgess. Fresh 35, and they'll reset. Nixon's got it out front. He gives it up to Rodriguez, and you're going to see. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Nobody gets a reaction out of the fans better than Bruiser Flint. They just basically are all over the you can maybe hear him behind us chanting his name. He is excited tonight, but you know what? There is so little margin for error in this conference. We said how a bunch of teams are are, are log jammed at one and one. Starting the league one and one is isn't horrible. No. But when you're one and two, now you're now now it's saying something. When I mean, you look at the teams that are one and one in the league, ODU, JMU, VCU, Mason, Drexel. So Mason's actually two and zero. Oh. Wilmington, Delaware, they're all one and one. So. Rozelle's going to take it out right in front of us, gives it quickly up to Joey Rodriguez, who looks over to Shaka for the play. And they're off and run as we approach 12 minutes to go here in the first half of action. Rodriguez gives it up to Burgess. Healy working hard on the inside. Burgess. Or Rozelle, rather, top of the key. Seven on the shot clock, dribbling. Rozelle determined to fire this one. Can't get it. Shot clock violation unless they get one off, and it'll be a shot clock violation. Never came close to the rim. 
Rozell was trying to free himself up there to, to get a shot off, but it just never happened. 11.44 to go in this first half. Drexel 13, VCU 9. Quick timeout right here on Ram Replay. Each year, the Virginia... Ram replay. The Rams have been very, very good at bouncing back after losses. Only four times over the last five years has VCU lost back-to-back -back games. In fact, they've won seven straight games following the loss, including four for four this year. Plus, we know how good they are at home. 145 and 23 all-time, including undefeated at home this year. In the 11th best home record in active arenas. It's pretty impressive. And you know what's number one? Cameron? Kansas. Oh. 160. Ball gallon? I think it was 167 games. I was Early. The Rams actually have been very good at home. They set a uh, single center record with 13 straight home victories early this year. It's now at 17. So that, then you mentioned Drexel's really good on the road. I think we're going to see, you know, Bruiser Flinch just, he's a fun coach to be around. Look at him. He is so intense and is known for challenging his players and, and using that emotion. I mean, that's just who he is. He is, man, if anybody should have a reality show, it should be Bruiser, right? I agree. T.O., forget T.O. Let's watch Bruiser. Here you go. Look at this. I don't think I don't think you want your kids sitting in the um, seats right behind the bench tonight. Uh, that is a yeah. That is a, there's got to be like a curse-free zone or something. <laughs> and so I was in the, the three rows after that uh, behind him. But they have a lot of fun. And you know what? He enjoys the interaction. I mean, he handles it right. As you see some early stats, Drexel doing a good job from outside. Five of nine from the field. Rams just three of eleven. Drexel's also hit one of two threes. The Rams are 0 for 3. Rebounding margin is uh, obviously going towards uh, Drexel, but not a huge, huge uh, difference right now. The Rams are going to do their best to keep that close. But it's not like it's a definitive statistics we've talked about in the past. Yeah, you don't want to get absolutely crushed on the boards, but the Rams' record in games in which they've been out-rebounded, I want to say it's, it's, like, it's like 6 and 5, 5 and 4. 11.25 to go. Drexel by four. Fouch with the rock. And the bucket there by Drexel. 15-9. So that was Darte Ruffin with another bucket. So right now Drexel clicking on offense. There's Bradford Burgess who's trying to find his range and has struggled early on. We'll see which way this whistle's going to go. So that's going to be on number 33, DJ Haley. I believe that's his first personal foul. So that's going to be team foul number four for the Rams. There's been five called on Drexel. So fairly even with the whistles. As you see, Rozell challenging Fouch for the Rock. Here comes Burgess over to trap. But Fouch quickly gives it up there to Gerald Coles. He's the senior out of New York, New York. Thomas with the basketball guarded by Rodriguez. Back to Fouch. Fouch goes baseline, floater, no good. Rebound, Ruffin, tips it in. And that's one of those plays where you get beat on the boards and it hurts. Bam. Yeah, you know, there's offensive rebounds. And like I said, Drexel, one of the top offensive rebounding teams in the country. And uh, right there, had a, Haley went for the block shot and was out of position, and Burgess just couldn't get there. It was very close to being an over the back, but it was a good job there by Ruffin to not draw obvious contact. 17-9, lead is eight. Rodriguez, no, gives it up to Haley. Haley to Rozell. Rozell driving, falling away, and then the tip in is good by Burgess. Nice, nice, aggressive going to the boards right there by Burgess, and getting, and it pays off for him by getting it being able to get the tip. So good job there by Burgess. And you see a foul there called. Looks like it's on Darius Theus. Uh, it's on Bradford Burge, excuse me. So you see uh, 
wholesale substitutions here as Theus, Nixon, Skeen, and Rob Brandenburg all come into the game for VCU, joining Javante Reddick on the floor. Nine forty-seven to go as Drexel throws it in under their own basket. They get it to Monsonat. Three rattles around. No rebound. I'm sure we're going to be tracking second chance points a lot tonight. Rebounding is 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 a pertinent stat, but the second chance points is really the telltale sign, right, Rod? Yeah, and so far five for Drexel. So, you know, five of the seventeen points that they have so far are second half or second chance re points. Right, exactly. Nice job there by Thomas. Knocking it down. They are not a very good free throw shooting team. They're, do you want to guess what their free throw shooting percentage is as a team? Do you know? I do know because I, I looked at it earlier and I, I, I was very surprised, but it is... Embarrassing. Yeah. It's 58%. It's 58%. But tonight, guess what they are, Rodney? 4-4. Four, four. Well, it is VCU. <laughs> Another miss by the Rams. The stats will be with us later in the game then. Yeah, no doubt. Brandenburg playing aggressive defense right there. Great job by him to cause the missed shot. You see the hustle leads to the rebound here by the Rams. Nixon's got the basketball. He's calling Theus to come around, drive this possession. Gets it down to Skeen. Skeen back out to Nixon. 20 on the shot clock, approaching nine minutes to go in this first half. Drexel has an eight-point lead. Theus, Brandenburg, Nixon, Skeen, and Javante Reddick on the floor. Skeen's really trying to get position on the big boy, Yannick Formbor. He's another beast down there. Three on the shot clock. Nixon, wow, throws up a prayer and goes down. Great ball movement right there by the Rams. Inside out, not able to get it inside the skein. Nixon coming through for the Rams in the clutch. And I think they have a little bit of a wet spot or something sticky or wet spot there on the floor that the official must have lost his footing on. And I think he's calling for somebody to uh, come out and clean it up. And they did, and they fixed it, and they're good to go. As Thomas comes out, Fouch comes in. Hinton's also in for VCU to replace Javante Reddick. So a nice three there by Ed Nixon. All the underclassmen getting some serious minutes here in the first half, Greg. Trying to see when was the last time Ed had a three. You got to go back to the two-lane game, Rodney. Ed Nixon has missed, had missed his last seven three-pointers. See, Fouch drives all the way in. Fortunately, it's a miss and a rebound by Skeen, who gives it to Brandenburg, who, boy, if you haven't seen Rob Brandenburg play yet, he is lightning quick. I mean, fast. Skeen off the front of the iron. That last offensive rebound was... Oh, and a travel. Was rebound by committee. There was about four Rams right there going up to get it. There was not going to be another offensive rebound right there. Fortunate break for the Rams right there as Ruffin picks up the turnover travel, wasn't able to get his balance. And you see... Brews are unhappy with that call and tried to get a clarification from one of the members of our officiating crew here tonight. So Theus will throw it in underneath. Rams have had some trouble getting it in from underneath their own basket this season. Nixon gives it up to Theus as Shaka Smart barks out the play. Rams down 5, 7.50 to go in this game. Theus pulls up for the jumper. Can't get it to go. But I like that. I like Theus because he needs to develop that jumper. Right? Yeah, he does. I mean, that was a shot that, you know, we saw so many years, Eric Maynard, that what we call that elbow jumper. And he is going to have to develop that shot, an outside shot, if he's going to be an all-around point guard for VCU. Theus is a kid who uh, is coming off a uh, career high. He had 10 points, I believe, against Georgia State as well. Yeah, he did. Good defensive possession there by VCU, and there's Theus again, moving fast with the basketball, gives it up to Brandenburg. He'll back it out a little bit. Brandenburg more than capable of running the point himself. Theus is going to the off guard. There's Nixon. Nixon, turn around near the foul line, can't get it to go. Rams out of position to get the rebound. So it's back over to Drexel. We're under seven minutes to go in the half. 
And it's a five point cushion for the Dragons. Brandenburg on Fouch. Determined look on the young man's face. Facing one of the premier guards in the CAA. There's Ruffin. Gives it up to Fouch. 10 on the shot clock for Drexel Fouch. Drives, no good. Brandenburg tracks down the rebound. Nearly fell out of bounds. And they said that he traveled. Yeah, he had one little extra hop when he already had control of the ball. And uh, we might have seen Bruiser get the over on the um, over under on your technical bet there if we, he wouldn't have called that after Ruffin's, Ruffin's travel call. 6.28 to go. Drexel 19, VCU 14 as we scan the crowd for the Dent Delta Dental Kiss Cam. And we can tell you a little bit about what's ahead for the VCU Rams. Th this is a brutal stretch for the entire CAA. This is when they start the new calendar year and they play Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and then they come back and play the following Wednesday. So certainly it's a brutal stretch. They unfortunately started with a loss at Georgia Tech. They're home tonight, Drexel. They're at UNC Wilmington, and then they're at, on Saturday, and then next Wednesday, they're at William & Mary. Then, that's a week from tonight. Then they will be back home, so their next home game, January 15th, Saturday, January the 15th, a noon tip with Northeastern. So Drexel leading here early on. What adjustments do the Rams need to make on the offensive end, because it looks like they're trying to get the ball down the scheme, and they're not able to right now. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just going to have to show a little bit more patience. They've, they've been able to get some penetration, but nothing's coming from it, so they're just forcing some shots. So a little bit more patience would, for the Rams would probably do them do them well. But, you know, overall, you know, they just need to keep doing what they're doing right now. It's not, not any major, major – hit some shots, right? I mean, that's an easy right. one to say. But – um you know, shooting 16.7% from behind the line and only 26% from the from the field so far. So ultimately, what I think they need to do is be a little bit more patient, try to get some shots out of the offense or off the assists in, in order to, to be productive. Only three assists so far tonight. Well, one of the other things they need to do is get Brandon Rozell going because Brandon Rozell, when he is hot, the Rams are hot. Now you see Ed Nixon, he's draining a three. If they can get Rozell to drain some threes, that usually bodes well. Brandon Rozell has 30 double-digit games, scoring performances in his career. The Rams, 25-5 and five in those games. And Hit just looking this year, he only scored seven against Georgia State. They lost. He only scored eight against UAB. They lost. Now, he did score nine against Tulane, and, uh, but they won, and zero against Richmond, but they lost as well there. So three of the last four games when Rozell doesn't score double digits, they lose. And again, He's not their only scoring threat, but he adds to the balanced scoring that Shock is trying to create. Getting some from Skeen and Burgess and Rozell and Rodriguez. But it's a sign of his position on the team, too. He's supposed to be that spark off the bench, Greg, and in, in order to do that, you know, he's got to give us some scoring. Thought there was going to be a foul there as Burgess got pushed to the ground. Under 10 on the shot clock, six to go in the first half. Monsonat down the lane, and it's good. Yeah, Joey just too small right there. Monsonat, nice spin dribble right there and takes him right to the hoop. So it's 21 to 14. Burgess determined to find his shot and he found it. So Bradford Burgess now with seven points in this game. And the Rams are down just four. Now it's about chipping away in this last five minutes and 25 seconds of the first half. Thomas goes baseline, no, back out to Massanat. Rodriguez guarding him out front, 10 on the shot clock, 5.15 to go in the first half. Fouch, long three off the front of the iron. See, Formbors all alone underneath, and there's Ruffin. So that was a third chance point, and they still got it. Yeah, VC just looking very lackadaisical when the ball went up that time on the to get a defensive rebound, just couldn't convert it. So right now, Drexel 23, VCU 17. And as you look at the rebounds, it's 17 to 10. And Drexel starting to add to that big lead. You said they out-rebound their teams by an average of 12 per game. Javante Reddick, where did that come from? Nice turnaround jumper right there by the freshman. Looked really smooth and comfortable with that shot. 
Monte Reddick's got four points in this game. The young freshman getting his first ever start for the Rams. It's 23-19. You missed that, Reddick got the start ahead of Darius Theus. Theus had started the last five and decided to start Reddick tonight. And the main reason is because Toby Veal's out. Now, Toby Veal had surgery today. And what we're hearing is, wasn't as severe as we first thought. Yeah, they went in to do his meniscus, to clean up some meniscus problems he was having. And when they got in there, they found out it wasn't meniscus at all. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce what it really, it <laughs> really <laughs> some was. Some sort of like tendonitis type of yeah, thing. Yeah, but here, what the end result is, he will be back sooner than we initially thought, because they just took it out. They were expecting to have him out for at least all of January and maybe part of February. And it looks like now, maybe a couple of weeks. So very, very good news because Veal's a guy that's a big spark off the bench, a big body. I mean, obviously, after Veal, you know, you, you've got young guys like Hinton and Haley and Javante Reddick. So Veal, certainly the uh, junior college transfer from Northwest Florida State, played one year in uh, Colorado. This guy was recruited by a lot of teams. I was recruited by Clemson, Oklahoma, LSU. <laughs> As for Yannick Formbor, Formbor misses it, and there's that 58% free throw shooting we were hoping to see. And Skeen picking up a foul right there by boxing out, so great job. Looked like he might have took a nick on the nose, but he'll be okay. So that's going to be on Derek Thomas, his first. But you, you go down the list of shooters. Chris Fouch is an 80% free throw shooter, and then the other Dragons that play a lot, 52%, 59%, 54%. 44, 41, 68. Speaking of shooters, we just had one enter the game for the Rams. Troy Daniels comes in. So Troy Daniels now on the floor with Joey Rodriguez, Brandon Rozell, Bradford Burgess, Jamie Skeen. Burgess coming off the three, looking to get down on the board again. Good ball move by the Rams. There's Skeen on the block. Form board is a big boy, a load. But Jamie Strong himself. Puts it on the floor, trying to make a move. Right hand can't go. Rebound. It's going to go to Drexel. Skeen battled, but he couldn't get it to go. Yeah, and you can't be disappointed if you're a Ram fan with that shot. Took their time. Nice ball movement right there. Just couldn't convert. Not a bad shot right there by Jamie Skeen. Under 3.30 to go in this first half. Drexel by four. Rams have led early, but have trailed now for a significant chunk of the first half. And that's going to be an offensive foul. And that's a call that I think the Rams have been asking for for quite some time. Drexel 23, VCU 19, 316 to go. You know, there's been so many great battles between the Dragons and the Rams, both here at the Siegel Center and up at uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Let's take a, a little look back at some of these great finishes. Now, they all didn't go in uh, VCU's favor. This is uh, VCU at Drexel in 03, and you can see Drexel scoring late to take a 70 to 69 lead and then uh, winning there and then that right there is the heartbreaker. Do you remember that one, Rodney, in 04? I, I do. I remember him taking his shirt. Yeah, he takes his shirt off and, and jumps, jumps up, up on the, on the scoreboard. scores table. And then this is uh, 05, where I believe that's, uh, is that uh, my man Jesse Pellarosa? I believe so. Jesse Peloroso had so many great game winners for the Rams. So, you know, they got him two out of three of those fantastic finishes, but that's why it's always been fun between Drexel and VCU. Then you add the element of Bruiser Smith, a personality like Bruiser Flint, and, uh, you know, it's made for a, an interesting rivalry here. You know, I think we focus so much on the Virginia schools and ODU, JMU, William & Mary, even, you know, obviously when Richmond was in the league. But, developed a nice little rivalry here with Drexel. Yeah, they sure have. I mean, those close games help. And then also the physical style that, that Drexel plays almost makes you want to not like make, not like them because it, they beat you up so bad. So, like you said, you take the physical play, the close games, the you know, the always being close in the league standings, and then throw in that extra um, factor of bruiser. You got a, you got a rivalry here. It's interesting because... You know, Bruiser's been the coach now at uh, Drexel for 10 years. But a coach that re visited the Siegel Center recently, Bill Harriet, who's the coach in New Hampshire, got his first head coaching job at Drexel. And 
when I was still in school in Delaware, Bill Harrion was the coach, and Drexel was a beast back then. That's when they had Malik Rose. Yeah. I don't know if you remember Malik Rose out of Overbrook High School, which is also the same high school Will Chamberlain came out of. And Malik Rose went on to play 13 years, and that's when it was the old NAC, the North Atlantic Conference, before it came to CAA and morphed again and again and again. But Bruiser's had an absolutely uh, great uh, job uh, keeping up the tradition here. Bruiser's six wins away. You, you found the stat, you read it, buddy. That's go good. Six wins away from 250 career wins and needs just nine wins to catch Bill Harrion. Bill Harrion, who came here earlier uh, at last the end of week. last year. Yeah, last week for the third on Drexel's career victories list. How about that? So that shows how long he's been and how much success he's had there. So the Rams are uh, struggling again there. They're now 7 of 24 for the field. Under 30%, Drexel, 9 of 21, 43%. Ball goes out of bounds, it'll stay. That looked about where you were doing end. your radio show, Greg. That's a hot spot tonight. <laughs> I did, have, we, had a, we, had a, we had a little spill. We had a little spill over there as Drexel was warming up, but uh, crisis averted. We're back down the other end here. This game is on uh, the Comcast network, so folks regionally seeing it throughout Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Masanat, that's going to be a kick, so they'll reset. 2.43 to go. Drexel 23, VCU 19. Bradford Burgess has seven for the Rams. Javante Reddick, in his first ever start, has four. Big gun for Drexel has been Darte Ruffin, who has eight points. Bit of a shocker. Hasn't missed a shot from the field so far yet either, Greg. Certainly a low-scoring first half. Probably going to have to start to look to see. I don't know if the Rams have scored under 20 all, all year in the first half. Good job tracking down the rebound there by Bradford Burgess. Rodriguez to Burgess to Troy Daniels. Looking to get on track. Make a couple of big rainbow threes. 20 on the shot clock. Approaching two minutes to go in this half. That's Theus from the corner. He can't get it to go. Air mails it. Ball is saved. But Drexel retains possession. So this is going to be Franz Massanat bringing the ball across the timeline, guarded by Joey Rodriguez. Gives it up to Fouch. That's, oh, and that's going to be an offensive foul there on Darte Ruffin, who tried to go baseline, but a good job there to cut off, to cut off his uh, progression to the basket. That's the lowest. 17 against, against University of Richmond. Richmond. Yeah. We, we were both trying to forget that one. Maybe that, yeah, you're exactly right. Theus around to Burgess. Gives it up to Rodriguez. 1.30 to go in this first half. Floater by Joey. Doesn't get the bounce. Hustling for the rebound, and the Rams come away with it. Joey, top of the key, gives it up to Daniels. Fires off a three, off the back iron. Rodriguez, another rebound. Good job by the Rams, hustling to get that ball back. Joey goes baseline, kicks it out to Burgess from the corner. Can't get it to go. And the possession ends for VCU. Good job crashing the boards and getting a couple loose balls. They're having trouble buying a bucket right now. 23-19, a minute to go, a minute to go in the first half. Fouch to Ruffin, out to Massanat. 15 on the shot clock, 50 on the game clock. Massanat all by himself, straight down the lane off the glass, good, it's 25 to 19. And Massanat has had a nice first half himself with six points. So it's 25 19. And right now, right now, VCU is uh, getting hurt on the boards 22 to 14. They're limiting their turnovers, but they're not exactly Fortin Drexel into a lot of turnovers, which has been tough. But again, Rams shooting just 25%, and the Rams just 2 of 10 from beyond the three-point arc. We know that Drixel has one of the best three-point defenses in the nation. They're holding teams to around 25% from the three-point arc. That's second best in the nation. That's downright stingy. So certainly, and, and, and again, when you look at who Drexel's played, I mean, some talented basketball teams. Obviously, their Philadelphia rivals, St. Joe's, they've played Louisville, who they beat and held at just 46 points. 
Syracuse, they did get a little pounded by Syracuse, 93 to 65. At Syracuse, no surprise. They lost to Rhode Island, 74-68. Rhode Island's a good team, a team that has a chance at an at-large there in the A-10. All right, so 40 seconds. So it's not like the Rams could hold it for the last shot, but right now they'll just take a bucket. Bucket in the defensive stand. Rodriguez, Nixon, Rozell, Skeen, and Burgess on the floor. Rodriguez to Burgess, 20 on the shot clock. To Rozell, steps back for a three. It looked a little short, and it was. That's a tough shot. Step in, fade away from, from deep when you're when you're not really hot. That's a tough, tough shot right there by Brandon Rozell. Who has no points in this first half. No points for Brandon Rozell. We mentioned when he doesn't get the double digits, the Rams struggle. Oh, and a great job by Rozell there. Getting the steal. It'll go to the line. That was under five seconds to go. It was a poor pass. Thomas lost the handle, but obviously Rozell played a big role in that. Rozell going to get to go to his free throw line to shoot two free throws. Maybe we can get him on the scoreboard right here, but he, is, he almost wished the call wouldn't have been made. He was almost there. So Brandon Rozell, who's a decent free throw shooter, 75%, will go to the line. The senior out of Highland Springs. Again, it was a great stat from uh, Sports Information Director Scott Day. In the 30, good job by Rozell. In the 30 double-digit scoring efforts for Brandon Rozell in his career, Rams are 25-5, and five, and you see the swipe there. Good job. I'm trying to see if that's their, uh, how many steals they have. You see that's just their fourth steal tonight. So you see the first one go down. Rozell, see if he can make it two for two, and he does. So now defense with 3.2 seconds to go and a four-point lead. And you see, Bruiser told him, just hold it. Don't even worry about it. We will take a four-point lead. That was very, very interesting. They didn't even try for a shot there. So, obviously, Drexel 25, VCU 21. It's halftime, and we're going to throw it over uh, just in a moment to Kelly Lemon, who's going to be standing by with Shock Smart, who uh, certainly uh, will have some thoughts on the second half. Kelly, take it away. Coach, your thoughts on the first half of play? You know, we're down four, but I was really, really pleased with the way we defended. You know, we cleaned up a couple things on middle drives at the end of the clock, and it was really, really good defense. We'll make shots in the second half. We just got to keep defending the way we are. Good luck in the second. We'll talk to you after the game. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks so much to Kelly Lemon. And just kind of looking again, so this would be the second lowest points in the first half for the Rams. They scored 17. Actually, they scored only 20 in the first half at Central Florida. Just cruising over them real quick before we uh, go to break here. So it'll be the third, third lowest scoring output in the first half for the Rams this season. But the good news, 20 minutes of Baskerville still on the play here at the Siegel Center. Drexel 25, VCU 21, it's halftime. We'll be back with some halftime stats next on Ram Replay. Virginia Lottery looks for the best public school teachers throughout the Commonwealth. 
The Super Teacher Awards are a tribute to those educators who go the extra mile each and every day to serve their students and communities. They teach because it's what they love doing. They make sacrifices and go above and beyond what is asked because they are Virginia Lottery Super Teachers. What a difference a day makes 24 little hours Brought the sun and the flowers Where they used to be Major funding for Ram Replay is made possible in part by the Virginia Lottery. Nearly $5 billion to K-12 public education since 1999. The Virginia Lottery, helping Virginia's public schools. By Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. By the Virginia Farm Bureau Federation, helping to protect Virginia farms and keeping fresh, safe local food on our tables. By Verizon Wireless. The VCU Medical Center. Every day, a new discovery by the Virginia Department of Tourism, www.virginia.org. By Woodfin, your home team. By the VCU School of Dentistry. And by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Welcome back. About to start the second half here at the Siegel Center. You're watching Ram Replay, Drexel 25, VCU 21, running down some first half stats. Rams were led in scoring by Bradford Burgess, who had seven points on three of nine shooting. Brandon Rozell was 0 for 5. So he had a tough first, uh, he had a tough first half. The Rams as a whole, 7 of 29 for the field, just 24%. Meanwhile, for Drexel, they had balanced scoring, led by Darte Ruffin, who had eight. Darte Ruffin averages seven a game. He had eight in the first half. Their main gun, Chris Fouch, had five. He was just two of ten. So the Rams did do a good job containing Chris Fouch. Yeah, I mean, the, the point that the Rams need to do is, is get is make some shots, get some easy shots, stay within the offense, get some assists so we can have some easy shots and, and get that shooting percentage up. You're not going to beat many teams shooting 20, 25 percent from the field. While Drexel did rebound the Rams 23 to 14, they had just nine second half points. We thought maybe that would be more. So that's that's a, a yeah, reasonable no. number. Nine to two Drexel to VCU in second chance points. I think the keys to the game they did. Right. But they took for granted they need to stay calm within the offense and get some easy points. Holding Drexel to 25 points is is great. I mean, Drexel's obviously not a – I mean, they average uh, about 69 a game. So holding Drexel to 25, but the Rams obviously well below their average. How about the, the freshman rookie, the uh, freshman Ruffin getting right on the board, right starting off right where he left off in the first half? He's, he's got nine points, and he averages – excuse me, yeah. He has 10 points, and he averages seven. Check that, and 12 points. He is, he is absolutely killing them, and he's just a guy that is, uh, he's just a guy. Maybe we should have just stopped well, he has there. Been, he has been, you know, the rookie of the week, two weeks in the CAA so far this year. Goodness. You see Reddick underneath, good job there by Javante Reddick. Javante Reddick was two of five in the first half, four points, two rebounds, and nine minutes of action. Good to see him get on the board again. So Reddick has six in the game. Thomas quickly up court, loses the handle, gets it back. 29-23, the lead is six for Drexel, who have led for a good chunk. They uh, they took the lead. Rams' last lead was four to two. There's Thomas, five on the shot clock, throws it up, no good. Burgess rebound. Rams are running. 
Good job right there by Burgess, not bailing out Thomas, who's taking a wild shot and was able to back up, did not draw the foul. Great Rodriguez. job right there by Burgess. Exactly. Rodriguez out front, moves to his left, gives it up to Nixon. Nixon to Burgess. And Burgess led the Rams in the first half with seven. Rodriguez down to Skeen. Jamie had just two points in the first half, and he tried to get two more. He couldn't. Big rebound there by Sammy Givens, who did not see a lot of action in the first half because he got two quick fouls, much like Jamie Skeen. And the bucket there, and that's Chris Fouch with the bucket. And Fouch has seven, but again, he was just two of 10 in the first half, so the Rams doing a really good job of shutting him down. And there's another one and done possession for the Rams. Fouch again, no, it's long. Joey with the rebound, and he'll push it. Gonna have to wait for some help, and he does. 31-23. Largest lead by Drexel is eight. There's Reddick with a little jumper, and he gets it to go. I tell you what, that's a tough shot right there. Great shot right there by, by Reddick. It's just a nice mid-range jump shot. That's a shot that a lot of youngsters don't have these days. Javante Reddick has eight points in about 11 minutes, and there's another easy bucket for Drexel. They are really doing a good job of getting the ball quickly up court, quicker than the Rams can get back on D. Yeah. So a miss there. It looks like both Again. teams are winded, Greg. Which is funny because, Rodney, we're only, uh, I mean, obviously we haven't had a break here, really, but we're only about uh, three minutes in, three minutes and ten seconds in. I mean, Drexel has more players with their shirts untucked than tucked in, and nobody playing any defense. Great and job right there by Red to come over and, and uh, help side defense and draw the charge. I don't think there's any doubt. Javante Riddick has come to play here, getting his first ever collegiate start for the Rams and is doing a nice job. And you're going to see a bunch of changes here. So DJ Haley's going to come in. The other freshman big man, Brandon Rozell will come in. And Darius Theus will come in. Rodriguez is out along with uh, Riddick and Nixon. 16.35 to go. Rams down eight. Theus to Rozell. Rozell, just two points in the first half. Both came for the free throw line, so he's yet to knock down a field goal. Bad pass there by Skeen. Yeah, just got stuck on the baseline, nowhere to go. Hoping for the best. So the Rams really struggling from the field, shooting 25%, while Drexel shooting about 48. Rams only nine of 35 from the field. Two of 12 from the three-point line. And that's a travel without question. And you know what's bad, you know, you say the Rams only shooting 25%, that's up from what they shot in the first half. So, I mean, really gonna have to focus in and get some stops here and start executing on the offensive end. Well, you mentioned uh, in the end of the first half that Drexel was one of the best three-point defense teams in the nation, ranked second nationally in three-point defense only allowing opponents to make about 25% of the threes that they launched. Burge is going hard to the rack. That's what the Rams need. Really worked hard to turn the corner right there and get, get Thomas on his back and take him all the way to the basket. Great job by Burgess. And he has nine and a little pressure from the Rams. Rozelle in Fouch's face. Gives it up to Givens. That's Colts. Gerald Colts Jr. The captain. With the rock. He's the senior from NYC. Givens, again, did see a lot of time. Couple of quick fouls early. There's Thomas, goes hard to the rack. That's gotta be, thought maybe that was a charge too. Boy, Thomas was quick off the bounce. But I thought Rozell might have gotten decent position. Instead, that's gonna be a personal foul, just his first. This is the under 16 TV timeout. Drexel 33, VCU 27, 15, 24 to go. Quick timeout, and then, a, and then we'll be back with more Ram replay. Broadcast of Ram replays made possible by the Virginia Farm Bureau Federation, helping farmers since 1926. Help protect Virginia farms and keep safe, fresh local food on our tables. Visit SaveOurFood.org to learn how you can help. The new Virginia Travel app for the iPhone and iPad. With quick access to local restaurants, maps, and attractions, and pretty much everything else you'd want to know about and find in Virginia. Download yours free at virginia.org. What a difference a day makes. 
You see a uh, VCU student from half court to win the whole building pizza. And he's a little bit short. Rocking the Eric Maynard. The vintage, the throwback, the jersey. throwback jersey. Hey, what number were you, Rodney? 45 in your program, number one in your heart. That's what they used to say. How are they not selling 45 jerseys at the VCU bookstore across the street? I'll never know. Oh, me either. There were plenty left. We need to get a 45 jersey night here for Sweet Chuck, my man, uh, Rodney Ashby. We're here courtside at the Siegel Center, great crowd. Next game for the Rams is gonna be on Saturday at Trask Coliseum. Once used to be one of the toughest places to play, not so much lately, but certainly Wilmington's having a nice season thus far. New and coach. they will uh, take on the Rams Saturday. The Rams will be back here at the Siegel Center on the 15th, the 15th, so 10 days, they'll play Northeastern on Saturday, January the 15th. So certainly a bunch of road games early in CAA play for VCU as Derek Thomas goes to the line. Thomas, two of two already in this game from the charity stripe as Drexel looks to extend their lead. Largest lead of the game has been eight for Drexel. The Rams have really struggled to try to, to try to cut into it. And Thomas gets them both. So it's 35-27. Sorry, Thomas has six, uh, eight points now. Theus. Theus Rozell Burgess, Skeen, and the freshman, DJ Haley, on the floor for the Rams. There's Theus looking to get it down to Skeen, whose boy is just blanketed there by Ruffin. They got a lot of wide bodies on the team. Good give and go there. And Skeen, I think, was stunned that he was so wide open and he missed it at point blank range. There's Massonat. He's going to go baseline, gets cut off. Sam Givens near the cap of the key. There's Fouch, baseline cut off again. Floater's no good, rebound. Burgess. So a good defensive stop there by the Rams, but they got to figure things out on the offensive end. Rozell for three, and that is one way to get it going. Brandon Rozell with his first field goal of the game. So that's his first shot. 20, almost 26 minutes, Rodney. Yeah, I mean, they call him averages for a reason, so hopefully he's going to be able to come in and hit his average and get into those double digits and get the Rams a win here tonight. And so he now has five. His first two points came from the charity stripe. Just the third three-pointer for the Rams there. They were two of 10, so, or two of 12, excuse me. Now they're three of 13. But then Drexel answers with one of their own. Was that a three or a two? Two. It was a By two. By Fouch, yeah. So Fouch now starting to heat up a little bit. He's got nine points. 37 to 30. They've really tried their best to get the ball down to Jamie Skeen, who has just two points in this game. And I want to say, you know, well, he's 0 for 5 from the field. Jamie Skeen. Just five on the shot clock, 13-30 in the game. And you see Rozelle, it doesn't hit the rim. This is going to be a shot clock violation, and it is. It never hit the rim. I didn't think it hit the yeah, rim. Yeah, I didn't think it did either. The Rams are kind of pointing and saying it hit the rim. Now, Shaka, Shaka wants them to check. He thinks it hit the rim. From I don't this think man, it's, even if it did hit the rim, it's not. I don't think it's reviewable, right? I mean, what are they going to do? I thought he was saying, look at it, but maybe that's maybe. Yeah, it. no, I think you're right. They were, but I'm saying what I'm saying is, if it's it not. did hit the rim, right? They're not going to give the ball back to the to the oh, to it the did Rams. Right. I mean, it won't make a difference. You understand what I'm saying? I guess they, I think they're arguing that it looked like it was still a loose ball when they blew the whistle. Okay, and then they probably go to jump ball. I, I, I mean, yeah. I think Drexel fell on it, but there was a whistle and then yeah. Drexel fell on it. it. The bottom line is, it's another failed possession for the Rams, who are down seven with 13.23 to go. Yeah. 
Sammy Givens near the top of the key. Gives it up there to Fouch. 20 on the shot clock for the Dragons. Gives it up to Coles. There's Sam Givens cut off. Nixon. Good defense here for the Rams. 10 on the shot clock. And then Givens gets his own rebound. Swatted by Rennick. That's what the big boy needs to do. Boy, was that a little reminiscent of uh, yeah. old Larry Sanders? Nice block right there by Reddick. Wasn't able to, his player got the offensive rebound, but he made up for it big time with that big block. Yes, he did. See Theus hurrying with the ball up court. Tempo's got to get back to the Rams. There's Theus, and he gets swatted, gets his own rebound, throws it up, but he's going to get fouled. So good job there by Theus to stick with it. It looks like Hinton is the one who actually picked up the foul right there. Or the, the foul was on McCoy, but it was against Hinton. So it'll be the Rams ball on the baseline. It seems like the Rams, this, you know, we, they want to play off tempo. We all know that. And, and they're, they're just kind of settling into the half court, which is not necessarily one of their strengths. Yeah, I mean, that's it. And, it, and then we're rushing it or trying to make individual moves, which in with Drexel being a great half court defensive team. It's just not working. We're gonna have to give some more team offense here. Get some assists. Under 12.30 to go now. Reddick just beyond the foul line. Misses the jumper, but he had made his last two. So that's why he had confidence in that shot. Javante Reddick does have eight points in this game for the Rams. Actually, right now, Javante Reddick is the leading scorer on the court for BCU. And second only behind Burgess tonight. And Massant looking for the foul. Hinton came over and put some, uh, put a little bit of that weight room on him. Rams are really not getting any uh, production from the guards. Theus with one point, Rodriguez with two, Brandenburg nothing, Rozell with five, Nixon with three. I mean, the guards are really struggling tonight, Rodney, from the outside. Yeah, they sure are. And, you know, both both teams really, I mean, we talked about VCU's woes behind the three-point line. They're shooting 23%, but guess what? Drexel's only shooting 16% from behind the three-point line. And you know the Rams, the young, the younger Rams, showing a little bit of frustration here with the, with Drexel's physicality and and holding, starting to hold and do a little bit of pushing of their own. The first foul you saw right there was Hinton pushing Ruffin straight out. He was not going to get that rebound. And then the other one was Javante just flat out holding his player. 12 minutes to go in this game. Drexel by seven and with the basketball. Monsonat gives it back up to Fouch, guarded by Nixon, who did a good job in the first half. You see Givens, no good, and they're going to call a foul. And Shaka kind of just throws up his hands like, are you kidding me? He's like, come on, it looked like a good defensive stance. You can see Shaka kind of expressing his displeasure. Drexel 37, VCU 30, 11.49 to go. Let's take a quick timeout. We'll be back with more Ram Replay. Fans, RMC Events would like to welcome you to the Verizon Wireless Arena at the Stewart C. Siegel Center for today's game. As the official event staffing provider for VCU Athletics for the past 11 years, RMC Events is also proud to be a sponsor and member of the Ram Athletic Fund. Our staff is here to help you in any way we can. And if there's something we can do to assist you, please ask any of our staff members. We're glad to see you. And from the RMC Events family to our VCU family, yeah! Siegel Center, Drexel 37, VCU 30. Essentially, VCU's trail for most of the game. They led very, very early in the uh, first minute of the game. 
but have been behind ever since and have really struggled to get any kind of continuity or consistency on offense. Well, everything is coming out of the half court. And like you said, we're not a, we're not built as a half court team. We're built as an up and down. And we haven't been able to turn over the Drexel Dragons here tonight. And because of that, we're not getting easy points. And because of that, we have 30 points with 12 minutes to go in this game. The, Ram the Drexel has 12 turnovers. They're like the quietest 12 turnovers ever. Rams have just six points off but those 12 we, yeah, turnovers. Yeah, we haven't been able to capitalize right. on them. They've been, they've been in situate, they haven't been off the press. A lot of times our turnovers come, come in the front court where we can turn it over and then score real quick and get the pace going our way. A lot of their turnovers have been the travel call down here with, you know, right. that type of call or, you know, the charges. Those are turnovers. You know, they're, they're dead ball turnovers. So it, it not possible for us to convert on those. Rams with just five turnovers, so they're taking care of the basketball. Only problem is they're 11 of 41 from the field, 27%, three of 13 from beyond the three-point arc. Brandon Rozelle did make one a couple possessions ago. We thought maybe that could be the spark, but since then, the Rams have not been able to go. As you see, Shaka Smart crouching and thinking how he could spark this team. Sammy Givens on the line, knocks it down. So I think it's just three points there for Sammy Givens, who averages 13. And he bounces that one off the back of the iron. So that, but they're still like seven of nine for the line. And they're 58% free throw shooting team. So they're actually doing a good job for themselves. If the Rams have not, and the Rams are five or six from the line. Only been six personal fouls called so far in the second half. Four on VCU, two on Drexel. Rozelle looked like he was going to pull up for the three. Gets it down to Skeen, who's guarded by Ruffin. In the paint, left hand goes. Nice job right there, recognizing that Skeen had the freshman Ruffin on him and not, not quite some of the heavy, heavy weight. Oh, turnover. Three ball. Oh, that would have brought the house down and really gotten this crowd back into the game. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it to go. That's a shame, because there was that turnover we just talked about, Rodney. And Rozelle fired off a three, and right now Brandon Rozelle is struggling. One of eight from the field. Colts Jr. with a basketball. It's back over to Ruffin. Ruffin to Massanat. And he drives, and Joey, they're gonna probably get Joey, it looks like. Oh no, they call. Brandon. Okay. On the outside just, perimeter defense. Yeah. Looks like maybe I thought they got it to Joey on the, uh, nobody's really in foul trouble for the Rams. Uh, Reddick has three, actually. All right, Reddick has three. A couple of guys have two. So that was just personal foul number five there, as you see Bruiser Flint, who doesn't have a technical yet, which is a story in and of itself. But that's because they're winning 38-32. It's like a football score. And a turnover. Rodriguez gets it. Now the Rams push a little bit. Rozelle down to Burgess. There's a bucket. And that's what you were talking about. Great easy bucket right there. Good job by Rodriguez to push it ahead to, to Rozelle. And Burgess making a great baseline cut. Now how about Bruiser immediately calling a timeout? Is that to, is that to prevent any kind of a momentum swing? Oh, I think so. I mean, he knew he has some that he that he can burn, and he did not want the Rams to be able to get into that rhythm and score some run off six, seven. Get another right turnover, right. or get another bucket, right? Yep. And that that actually you can see a very interesting, and you see Rozell quickly got it down to Burgess, and that's what the Rams need to do. Especially after these turnovers and made buckets is to really put the clamps down. Yeah, that was one of the few times tonight that, that the Drexel just fell asleep on a on a transition break right there and Bruiser did not like it, called a timeout, and slowed things down. It's the first time it's been uh, I feel like it's the first time it's been four since 23-19, just before the half. And, 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 you know, the Rams are doing a lot of things right. You know, we talked about them. They had to control second chance points at the beginning of the game. They have, the Drexel does not have any second chance points in the per, in the second half, Greg. Wow. They had nine in the first half, and they still have nine right now. So 
great job by the Rams there. You know, they're working really hard. They're playing good defense overall. I mean, I think if you ask Coach Smart with 10 minutes to go in the game and Drexel had 38, would you be happy? What's the answer? No, no question. So they're getting after it on the defensive end. But it's the fact up. is, is they're well below their average. I mean, obviously the Rams are averaging 74 points a game, and they have 34 through almost 30 minutes of action tonight. Yeah, they're going to have to have to get some more easy buckets in order to beat this team. They're just not going to be able to do it in the half court. That's not an adjustment that you can make in a huddle. Uh, you know, regardless of, of, of your coaching style, it's very tough to make an adjustment like that in a huddle. We're going to have to get it other ways, fast break points. Well, there's plenty of time still left in this game. Drexel 38, VCU 24. The Ram fans are, are really into it for the first time since like the opening minutes of this game. Both of these teams are coming off losses in CAA play on Monday night. Drexel lost to Hofstra. VCU losing down in Atlanta to Georgia State. Both teams will be back in action on Saturday. The Rams have obviously been very good in CAA play. Since the 05-06 season, they're 68-24 in the regular season. That's almost 75%. Starting off one and one's not hard, but one and two, now you're starting to dig yourself a hole. That's why this game is critical, even though we're just in the first week of January. And look at the pressure from the Rams. That's great to see coming out of the timeout. Drexel almost threw it away. 10 second clock is going. It is going to be close, but they get it across in the nick of time. Thomas now in the corner, and the Rams can already tell a little bit more bounce in their step coming out of that timeout. A little Rodney. bit more intensity, a little bit more bounce in the step, but you're exactly right, Greg. Sammy Givens with a rock. 10 on the shot clock, gives it up to Fouch. Fouch will shoot him from there. There's Thomas, there's five on the shot clock. Gives it to Ruffin, it's being guarded. There's two, there's one, shot clock violation! Outstanding defense by the Rams! Boy, that'll get you fired up. That's coming out of the timeout. That's a great job by the Rams. It sure is, and the Rams fans responding with the chant of VCU. Let's see if we can get something in this half-court offense that we've struggled so much with tonight. No question, Rodney. 38-34. I like this matchup right here. Look at Skeen. Loses the handle briefly. Kicks it out to Rozell. Rozell tries to go baseline. They're going to call a block there on Derek Thomas. And the Rams will take that. It's only going to be personal foul number three on Drexel. So it'll go out on the baseline as the Rams throw it in. I'd really like to see us take advantage of this matchup with Skeen and Ruffin. I think Skeen can go to work on Ruffin. Thomas has three personal fouls. It's something to look at there because he's one of their starters. And there's a three ball there. Brandenburg, we jacked that up a little early, Rodney. Yeah, a little early. You know, I'd like to see us at least let the big guys touch it one time on the inside first. Turnover. Turnover. Brandenburg to Rozell looking for help. No, he's going all the way. Throws it in. No, Brandenburg. Rebound. The lead is two. 38-36, and you can feel the momentum. Switching over to the Rams. Shot, no good. Gibbons, blocked by Skeen. Put back, no good. Another stick back, no. Rebound Rams. Oh, this place is coming unglued. Rams down two. Bruiser Flint standing near midcourt, screaming that the officials he wanted a foul there. Rodriguez with the rock. Over to Burgess, Burgess to Rozell, wide open three, big VCU takes the lead, 39-38, and the Seagull Center is rocking. That is exactly almost on cue, Rodney, what we talked about. Turnovers leading to buckets, leading to momentum. Yeah, and then it showed, and that's giving them a lot of energy on the defensive end, too. So great job by the Rams to get things going and get exactly what we needed, some fast break points. So that is a 9-0 run by the, I'm sorry, a 9-1 run by the Rams. It was 37-30, and it was 37-32, and it was 38-32. 
And watch this Brandenburg play right here. You see Rizal coming down the fast break, not able to convert. Brandenburg hustling to put it back in and up off the glass. Great hustle right there by the freshman to get back down the court with the second chance point of our own, Greg. Let me uh, clarify, 7-0 run by the Rams. Let me just keep it simple, Rodney. 7-0 run, and boy, uh, you're looking at Rob Brandenburg, he's lightning quick, right? He is lightning I mean, quick, 6'6 six, six wingspan. I'll tell you what. And you see the Rozell three, his second of the game. So Brandon Rozell now has eight points in this game. Bradford Burgess has 11. And Rob Brandenburg gets on the board with his first two. And boy, were they big as well. Seven straight points by the Rams. And so what we have right, so what we have right here is McCoy came to check in. And the rule is if you're not there before the first horn, you cannot check in. But they, he must have, the official scorer, Mark Hall, said saying that he was there before the first horn to let him in. So that's what the slowdown was. You see Shaka talking to Sean Hell, one of the officials, and look at this pressure. Rams continuing. You can really tell they've got renewed energy catching their second win here with about 8.15 to go in the game. So buckle up, because this is going to be another wild finish between the Dragons and the Rams. Fouch out front, again, a seven straight points by the Rams. There's Thomas, over to McCoy, knocked away by Skeen. Everybody's on the floor, and it's gonna go over to VCU if it's a possession arrow, and it is. So it's not directly a turnover, but an indirect turnover. And a, a Bruiser saying he called a timeout. I, I mean, it was hard to tell. Bruiser wanted a timeout and said that his player was calling a timeout, and in classic Bruiser fashion, the body language is He's epic. selling it. He's selling it over here, Greg. And the crowd chanting his name as the VCU dance team takes the floor. And certainly... turnovers the players executed it and we were able to get some second chance all started off the one time that Drexel didn't get back in the transition and we passed it along to to uh, Brandon Rozelle and I believe this is going to be it right here right up to yep right up to Rozelle Rozelle nice that really cut. Got it going? and then Bruiser tried to call a timeout but it wasn't enough that wasn't long enough exactly and then you'll say again so it's Rodriguez Rozelle Burgess and that got it going because then they got the uh, tip in from Brandenburg, and then they got the big three from Rozelle, and it's seven straight points, and the Rams have a lead. It was 38 to 32, and now it's uh, obviously 39 to 38. The Rams, their first lead since the first minute of this game, and obviously their shooting percentage has gone up. Uh, Rams now over 30% when they were hovering around 25, and they're better from the three point arc. They're four of 12. Remember, they were, I mean, four of 16, they were two of 12. Right, so do you know they've they've certainly uh, become gotten a lot more efficient, and you see Drexel struggling in their last five possessions. So VCU getting after they're up to nine steals, they have nine fast break points, eight points off turnovers, eight points off turnovers. So great job there by the Rams, and they've got the basketball in a one point lead. So see if they can continue this little 7-0 spurt. Rozelle fires off the three, can't get it to go. Rams hustling for the rebound. Look at Brandenburg, how fast he got to the ball. Joey got pushed out. So Joey had the ball, but he got pushed out there. Great hustle by the freshman Brandenburg to go get that ball. Keep it alive for the Rams. They called that on Massanot, which is a good thing, because if they called it on Thomas, it would have been his fourth. Although, Daryl McCoy does have four fouls. I missed that last foul on him. 
So Drexel getting in a bit of foul trouble. Drexel's at just 14 fouls, the Rams at five. Rodriguez drives up and under, wide open Brandenburg. Can't get it to go. That's an over the back of McCoy. Come on. That is ridiculous. He, he basically stepped on Joey Rodriguez. Yeah, nice. Oh, are they going to call it on Drexel or BCA? Yeah, they're going to call that on Drexel. Maybe a bit of a makeup there. I mean, I a good call. I, th I thought there should be no whistle. Yeah, it would have been better for us if there was no whistle. I mean, but not, not a good call. There's I nothing going to make up for the missed call down there. Wow, that was Where brutal. Joey just was flat out mugged up underneath the basket. McCoy just pushed him directly to the floor. I mean, I don't know first if we can all, look at it. that. Daryl McCoy's 6'9". They list him at 2'7". He's got to be pushing three bills. And Joey's I'm like, what, 140 wet? Yeah. Maybe seven minutes to go. Rams by one. At, oh, and Skeen missed the alley oop there. So it'll go away. Go back to the uh, the possession. Will go back over to Drexel underneath their own basket. That's Sammy Givens throwing it in. And Good another steal. turnover. Rodriguez three ball off the back of the iron rebound. The Rams are doing a great job on the rebounding. Rozell, watch the elbow there. Skeen gets it back out to Brandenburg. They'll run this play. Great job by Skeen right there. He's taking that shot in the pass, but great, great job right there, showing a little bit of patience. Boy, it's a long drought for the Dragons. They have not scored in a while. Kick out to Burgess. Bradford can't get it to go, and Skeen taps it out, and another rebound for the Rams. It's funny, the rebounding margin's still pretty big, but the Rams have dominated during the spurt, which is a 7-0 run. Skeen trying to work his way in, fall away, go. Make it rain, big fella. I tell you what, that was a nice shot right there by Jamie Skeen. 9-0 run, it's 41-38. And Drexel's coming apart at the scene. Even though they're only down three, another turnover. This is incredible. And Bruiser is primed for a technical. He's just getting all lathered up. He's giving that gum a workout, that's for sure. He might want to use a couple more timeouts. He only has two, and he's yelling at McCoy. Well, if this is going to be a close game, he's going to save those for under two minutes. Right around the 10-minute mark, there was the Drexel had 12 turnovers. In the last four minutes, they've had seven turnovers. Rodriguez straight away center. Doesn't get the shooter's bounce. Look at Skeen hustling for the board, but then throws it away. That's tremendous effort by Skeen underneath. That's okay. It's going to give us a chance to still set up the press. And Coach Smart going a little bit of offense, defense here right now, getting Theus to check in. Oh, baby, this has just been a wild five-minute spurt. It was right around the 10.30 mark when we kind of said, look, the Rams are still in this thing, they can get it close, and Drexel is just in a horrible, horrible drought. Their last field goal came at 14.03, Rodney. 14.03. Almost 10 minutes of clock time. That is incredible. I mean, you were talking about you're close to seeing a nine-minute drought for the Drexel Dragons here on offense. Gibbons, spin, looked like a travel, no call. Matsunat at the line, looked like a good all-ball by Darius Theus. They're going to call a foul. Yeah, I wasn't sure what was on the shot clock, but it was it was getting down there with Matsunat had really nowhere to go. But you know, you can't fault the effort right there by Theus in the half-court defense. I'm just trying to do, Drexel led by eight with 10.33 to go. It was 35 to 27. So obviously since then, it's been a 14 to three run. 14 Look at that shot run. right there by Skeen, just high and up. You know, this is a tough, tough shot. You can see him get the ball right here in the post, fade away, high, high up, up. Straight through the hoop right there by Jamie Skeen, great shot. Missed it, and then somehow gets the rebound. 
But again, in case you're wondering, it's a 14-4 run. Just incredible in the last six minutes and change. Three-pointer right there by Fouch. You see Fouch getting Drexel the lead again. So it's 42 to 41. So after a 9-0 run, Drexel answers with a free throw and a three to regain the lead. 42-41. So we showed you a recap of some of the great Drexel VCU finishes. And we are poised for another here tonight in the Siegel Center. 4.25 to go. Drexel by one. Theus. Drives, pulls up, floater, no, rebound, Ruffin. That same struggles that, that VCU's had in the half court. We need to get this, get the tempo back up in our favor. No question, and a good steal by Ed it. Nixon. Great job. Rozelle had been hit another three-pointer from there earlier, not two or three minutes ago, so not, not a bad shot right there. We're under four minutes to go now. Drexel still by one. VCU has 16 fouls, Drexel with five. No one on the floor right now for VCU in massive foul trouble. They float it down to Sammy Givens, and that's gonna be a foul on Brad for Burgess, and that'll be his second. Yeah, it looked like Givens made some space by pushing off of Burgess, but the good foul right there, Burgess. Drexel, not a good free throw shooting team, so I'd rather send him to the line than give him the buddy shot up underneath the paint. So that was the under four timeout, under four timeout. Drexel 42, VCU 41, but VCU got back into this game with a 9-0 run, a drought in which Drexel went without a field goal for almost 10 minutes. Their only points came from the free throw line. So certainly a tremendous run as you look at our game reset. Rams still with four timeouts, so they're in great situation there. Drexel with two. And you see the field goal percentage with Drexel shooting right around, four, no, right at an even 40%, 16 of 40, while VCU 16 of 56, 28.6. So round up 29% for the game. 56 shots for the Rams, Rodney, compared to just 40 for Drexel. Yeah, I mean, they were working really hard on the offensive rebound, at the offensive end of the court, so I'm not quite sure how many offensive rebounds that the Rams have so far tonight, but working hard on the offensive end and also the turnovers creating a couple extra shots for the Rams. Yeah, no question. So when we know that the Rams on the defensive end have done a, ju uh, done a good job, holding their opponents to right around uh, 70 points per game tonight. This is just a, you know, an old-fashioned CAA brutal piece. Go ahead. 12 offensive rebounds so far for the Rams. That's fantastic. The rebounding margin is 41-26. But, you know, again, like I say, it can be misleading. The Rams got so many great second and third uh, rebounds during that stretch. And, and so, you know, Drex will say, oh, look, we're, we held up our rebounding margin. It's at 15 now. but. Again. But it was when we got it. it right. We got them in the important times when we were getting easier points off second chance shots because we're not scoring in the half court, Greg. We're just flat out not scoring in the half court. The only way is the second shot, second chance rebounds, and off the break. I will tell you that the Rams have missed their last five three-pointers. So after getting a couple to go during that drought, they've missed their last five. So again, but that drought, you know, the four of 21. Dismal 19%, Greg. Yeah, that's tough. Definitely tough. A lot of their success has come, you know, inside, obviously, here during this uh, during this run. All right, we're gonna get back to action. There's 3.30 to go. We've seen wild finishes before between these two CAA rivals. Sammy Gibbons goes to the line. On the floor for VCU is Rodriguez, Brandenburg, Nixon, Burgess, and Skeen. And Brandenburg was on the floor for a good chunk of that spurt, that 9-0 spurt. He's so quick. Gives the, uh, the, the Rams such a boost. Certainly we got to talk about Jamonte Redick, who got a start here tonight as well. It did a really good job, although he's been on the bench. Four of eight from the field. Eight points, he does have three fouls. 
And now you let it all hang out, all hands on deck. It's 44 to 41. So that's six straight points now. And here's the matchup that got things started. We have Skeen down there with Ruffin on his back. Ed Nixon can't get it to go. So after nine straight points by the Rams, it's six straight from Drexel, and they have the ball with three minutes to go. We have got to get the ball inside to Ruffin, I mean to, to Skeen with Ruffin on him. It's our, it's our chance to get things going, any semblance of a half-court offense. Nixon all over Colts here. As Brandon Burke, the freshman, is on. Fouch the sophomore, there's Ruffin, and he gets it down, they're gonna call it the other way. That's the second time tonight that they've gotten Givens on that wrap around. He really does a good job of getting a, what we call getting a piece of the paint for the big fellas to make it so when he catches the ball that he can absolutely score it. But what he does is he wraps around and holds the offensive player behind him and it's just, it's an offensive foul. Bruiser Flint, look at him laughing. He has his technique where he talks to his SID who's sitting at the scores table and is yelling, but he's really talking to the official. Yep. It's hilarious. All right, back to serious stuff here. Rams down three, need a bucket with 2.35 to go. Burgess gives it up to Brandenburg. Back to Rodriguez. Rozell has it, under 2.30 now, under 2.30 to go in this game. Rams down three. And there's Rozell, his arm got hit on the way up. No foul called. So now the Rams need to clamp down again on defense. Monsonat, and now it looked like that was gonna be a steal. Boy, he really telegraphed it. Rozell was on it, but couldn't follow through. Brandenburg on Colts. Two minutes to go, two minutes left in this game. There's Colts at the foul line. 10 seconds on the shot clock, he needs help. Looking for a clear out, Colts. Gives it up to Fouch, a long one, not even close to the rim. He wanted a foul, but he's not going to get it. And so Fouch had to shoot that one, but not, not the shot Bruiser was looking for. Ram's going to get another chance in the half court. So again, time starting to wind down, under 145 to go. Three-point game. They don't need a three, they just need a bucket. And there's Skeen. Trying to go to work on Ruffin, just like you said, Rodney. Fall away, can't get it to go. Again, needs to move a little yeah. bit more in the paint instead of settling for that fall away, but give credit to Ruffin, who's been a beast right now all over Jamie Skeen. Skeen only has six points tonight. Jamie Skeen just two of seven from the field. Six points, seven boards though for Jamie Skeen. 123 to go. So the Rams defense has certainly done their part tonight. Yeah, it has not been on the defense in the half court defensive end. We just have not been able to get the pace into our favor and get these, these fast break points or transition points that we need. Drexel's in the one and one. Next foul will put VCU in the one and one. Timeout situation. Drexel only has one left. VCU has four. Now we have to remember Drexel, one of the worst shooting free throw teams in the league. So if it comes down to it, you know, to extend the game, I would probably start fouling, fouling a little earlier than you would against some typical teams because they are such a bad free throw shooting team, even though they're 10 for 13 tonight. Well, you know, the statistics say that they're due to miss. And that they did that against Georgia State and it backfired against yep. them a little bit yep. because Georgia State was not a very good free throw shooting team, but they were perfect down the stretch. So we'll see what Shaka decides to do here. Ruffin does get a turnover. Rodriguez to Rozell, two on one. Rozell up and foul! Into foul! Just what the doctor ordered right there. You see right here, Rozell coming down. Finch not getting there in time. High up off the glass by Rozell. Drawing the foul and getting to go to the line right now to complete the three point play and tie the game up, Greg, with just a minute and 15 seconds to go. Wow, just what? The Rams needed the senior, Brandon Rozell. And Bruiser is almost in the locker room. It's a tech, oh, I thought they go. I'm not 100% sure what he's upset about. What did he think that that? He thought it was gonna charge. I never thought that that was a charge. He I was mean, too far underneath the basket, Absolutely, well, uh, which is the new rule. Yeah. Well, not the new rule, it's the old rule, old new rule from last year. And this game is tied at 44. One. 12, 10 to go, Rams with pressure. Another 
Wild finish between the Dragons and the Rams here at the Siegel Center. Look at Joey clapping right in front of Monsonat. And a timeout there. No foul by wow. Rodriguez. Oh, they put Monsonat like on the line. Very interesting there. It looked like they were about to call a timeout, which I thought was weird because they only have one left. So now Shaka will get a timeout. Let's uh, take a look at the replay. And you'll see, Rozelle, let's see if he thought. He wasn't as far no. under as I thought, but I did not think he got set. It was close. It's a bang, bang call. And, you, and when it comes down to it, the offense is going to get that call when it, with a minute left in the game. So Monsanto's going to be going to the line. And he's about a 52% free throw shooter. Everybody is fired up except that little guy. We're not at 44, 59.2 seconds left. Man, oh man, it has been a wild year. Even though we've only had 88 points scored, we've seen the Rams score 88 on their own. But it's tonight, been, yeah, it's been the most exciting 44-point game the Rams have had in a while. So for the Rams, we're going to have Rozelle, Skeen, Nixon, Burgess, and Rodriguez. As Chris Fouch goes to the line, he's their guy. Sophomore out of the Bronx, averages 20 points a game. But the Rams have done a nice job. He only has 12 tonight. I say only 12. He makes it. So it's 45 to 44. Fouch will get one more because it is a one and one. And he gets that one to go too. So Fouch comes through. It's a two-point game. Rams with a basketball. 55 seconds left. Brazel. Looking for help, looking to drive, goes up, kicks it out to Rodriguez. Three ball, pure Joey Rodriguez! That's the biggest shot Joey's hit all year. Three ball gives the Rams the lead. And no hesitation at all from the senior. And let's take a look at that right here. You see the ball get go inside. We get a nice drive here by Rizel from the pick off of Skeen. Rizel kicks it back out to Rodriguez. Bam. Bam. Nothing pure, but that, buddy. Pure, because Joey Rodriguez, you know, he did have 10 points against Georgia State, but we all know that Joey has been struggling. Partially it was due to injury, but now it, you know, it, it almost seems a little mental. I'm trying to see. That was his first three-pointer tonight, Greg. It was his first. He had two, two for five against Georgia State, none against Wofford. Two for, I mean, none against New Hampshire. Two of two for against Wofford, and then he, before that he had missed, boy, seven straight. He was one of his last 13 after the UAB game. But since then, so what's that, four of eight? And what is he tonight for three point? One for four? Yeah. So he's five of his last 12, but huge, huge shot for Joey Rodriguez, who only has five points tonight. Is it March or January, Greg? Excuse me? Is it March or January, the way these two teams are going at it? No question, one point lead. 46.8 seconds left, one of the officials at the scorer's table. Not 100% sure what is being discussed here. It might be the game clock. Either that or I don't know what the substitutions might have happened. Again, I'm not sure what, what they're doing. Shock is going to call his five over to the bench, so Bruiser says, come on over and I'll talk to you. And it's going to be... What was he saying? He's not sure because okay. it was a made basket, so it couldn't be the shot clock. Sean Hall, one of the officials, standing right next up. Uh, one we have to get that tenth of a second back on. It all matters. So Sean Hall says one tenth of a second. It was four point now. It should be four point eight. Boy, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's that, impressive. That's your own that is that's pretty impressive, right? He's over here. Got a. We're, we're tough on these guys. Yeah, we are. On, tenth of a tenth of a second. It's pretty good. Burgess in front. Trying to distract Gibbons, who's having trouble getting it in. He gets it to Coles. They're looking for the trap. Monsonat, trap. Then they get it to Gibbons, who brings it across. 27 on the shot clock, 37 on the game clock. About a 10 second difference. Sam Gibbons, Coles fighting through with Rodriguez. 17 on the shot clock. There's a three block by Ed Nixon. 
Wow, it got up. We talked about in the beginning of the game, he was going to be a key. We had to keep an eye on Nixon, not because of the offensive end, but how he was going to guard Chris Fouch. Just Great under, job. Just under 25 seconds left in the game, 14 on the shot clock. As they throw it in here, Drexel to Fouch. Fouch guarded by Nixon, who's done a good job tonight. There's Colts. He drives. There was a whistle. Whistle. Timeout, Drexel. So Bruiser burns his last timeout. With just seven seconds on the shot clock, and 18 seconds on the game clock. It really looked like Gerald Coles had gotten a step there. Now the shot didn't go in, but it also may have been because he didn't, he heard the whistle and so he eased up. But you see it there, seven on the shot clock, 18 seconds left in this game. Rams by one, thanks to a three-pointer on the last possession by the senior, Joey Rodriguez. And let's give credit where credit was due. We talked about the need for senior leadership, and the last two possessions have been big buckets by seniors, Rozell and Rodriguez. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more, and Rodriguez, uh, you know, had not hit a three-pointer all night long, but did not hesitate to pull that trigger one second, and he just drains it. So everyone standing here at the Siegel Center, we have seen some wild finishes. I don't know if they can re-cue those finishes that we've seen. Two were at the Siegel Center. One was up at uh, Philadelphia. Buckets that ended basketball games. I think it was 02 or 03, 04, 05. And now we got a new addition here in 2011. As the Ram students absolutely feeling it. So are the hardcore alums. So here's the situation on the baseline. A lot of times that the player would get to run the baseline. Damn, right? You cannot. It's a dead ball. You're a timeout. Yeah. Good call there. Rodriguez-Nixon scheme. Burgess Rozell on the floor. Colts trying to throw it in. Immediately shot by Fouch. No good. Rebound underneath. Picked up by Scheme. Who gets mugged? Absolutely got mugged. Burgess got mugged first. Burgess was the one that blocked out oh, the last team to go get Cruiser it. Flint is going ballistic. He said, I think he just got ejected. He went after the officials. They are holding him back. Bruiser's out of here. Bruiser's going to the locker room. Bruiser Flint absolutely busted a gasket. And I'm not sure why he was upset because the foul, there should have been two fouls called there on Drexel, but he was immediately ejected. That wasn't two technicals, that was boom, boom, out. And, you know, and that, that's gonna cost him the game, because we're gonna get two free throws two free and throws. possession. Yep. No, plus the foul on the free throws. Oh, so four free throws. Yeah. There he is, there's Bruiser. This is after he got ejected. After he got ejected, but he absolutely went nuts. And that was a great job by the Rams. Burgess and Skeen did a great job boxing out. I don't know if we can show that last play. Well, Joey's at the line for the technical shit foul shot, so let's show those. But Skeen and Burgess did a great job. Joey gets the first one to go. It's a two-point game. So these are the technical fouls. But Burgess and Skeen did a great job blocking out. Burgess got absolutely mugged, pulled to the ground. I think, so I think Bruiser said it was Burgess pulling the other guy to the ground. Right, right. So now these are the second set of free throws for the second technical. So four. And then Skeen goes to the free throw line for one plus the bonus. Wow. How about that? 48, 49, 50, and this could be 51. So what was a one-point game is now a five-point game, four straight Technical free throws made by Joey Rodriguez. And now Skeen goes to shoot one plus the bonus. Well, so we, maybe we can see quickly underneath what happened. And this is the inbounds. And you see the shot and you see Burgess, he's just getting pounded underneath. And then there's the mugging there by yeah, I'm not sure what he was upset about on that one. Wow, look at that. So that's five straight free throws. Well, actually, if you go back to here, one, two, three, four. Oh, that was a three-pointer. No good. 52-46, six-point game. Cannot foul here. Shot good by Massanat. 
Skeen trying to get it in. He calls a timeout. Smart move because the Rams had two left. Drexel has none left. And Drexel's got to go at it without Bruiser Flint, who's in the locker room. So what the Rams have to do right now is to make sure that we get the ball in the hands of a free throw shooter. Well, most importantly, get the ball in bounds. Hopefully in the hands of, the three, of a free throw shooter. And what we, we don't want to get it down in the corner. Well, we had told you earlier there have been some fantastic finishes between the VCU Rams and the Drexel Dragons. 03, 04, 05. You see here, this is a flashback in 03 up in Philly. That's Jesse Pellarosa. Pellarosa with a late bucket that gave VCU the victory. And then later, this is a wild three-pointer as a Drexel Dragon falling out of bounds that gave the Dragons the victory in 04 here at the Siegel Center. And then the Rams got him back again. The next year, my man Jesse Pellarosa again, knocking it down, giving the Rams the victory in 05. Could they pull it out here tonight? It would be equally dramatic. And you'll see Burgess throws it into Rozell. The ball goes out of bounds. Did it go out of bounds? Yeah, out of bounds on, off Drexel. It's going to be, it's going to give VCU a little bit more room to work. It's going to be VCU's ball at half court. Boy, VCU has had some really hairy moments trying to inbounds the ball under their own basket this year. So this time it's Nixon, gets it into Joey. Hasn't gotten fouled, now he got pushed out. What? Did no he say foul. Joey was? Yeah, he just stepped out of bounds. Wow! That is surprising. I think Joey was waiting to be fouled. Well, there should be a lot more time off the clock, I think. Because there was the clock was running as soon as Joey touched it. Right. It seemed like there was quite a few ticks. They're saying there's 2.9 left. That is surprising. All right, so again, it would. So Joey coming in expecting the foul and just stepped out of bounds. That was, I mean, that was a really weird play because obviously if they don't foul, the game runs out. And I guess Joey felt like he got pushed and fell out of bounds. And they said, oh, there was no foul there. You fell out of bounds. That was bizarre. So let's reset it. Rams by four, 52-48, 2.9 seconds left. Neither team has any timeouts. Uh, that was the last uh, timeout. VCU just called it. So it's a, a four-point game. So even a three here, which would make everybody really nervous. I was trying to think, Rodney. The Rams have made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of eight free throws there down the stretch. They're 11 of 13 from the line, Rodney. But uh, which is fantastic. Yeah. And, but the, the clutch ones, the free throws, the four in a row made by Joey, and one of two made by Skeen, and there were two previous to that that tied the game at 44. 52-48, a tick, a shade, a hair under three seconds, 2.9 to go as Thomas throws it in. They need to get off a shot in a hurry. Ruffin to Thomas, a three ball, no good. Rams win. Rams win. 52 to 48, and an absolutely wild finish. And Shaka Smart won't be shaking hands with Bruiser Flint because he's already in the locker room after he was ejected in the final seconds of this game. Unbelievable contest. Jamie, uh, excuse me, Bradford Burgess with 11, Brandon Rozell with 11. Rodney, we don't have a lot of time for a post-game wrap. Just your final thoughts on this wild finish. It's just a, it's another typical Drexel VCU game, and uh, I think Kelly Lemon's going to grab Coach Smart to see what he has to say about it. Go ahead, Kelly. I don't even know where to start, Coach. I'm just going to let you talk about the second half of play. I'm just so proud of our guys because it wasn't a good night for us offensively, but we hung in there, and I told him we'd make some shots, and we made just enough to win. Joey hit the big three to give us the lead. I, I couldn't be more proud of our guys. This is the proudest moment since I got to VCU. Good. Congratulations to you. Good luck on the road. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Kelly. You can hear uh, more from Coach Smart on his coaches show tomorrow, 6 o'clock live from Home Team Girl and the Fan on ESPN 950. What a wild, wild finish. VCU 52, Drexel 48. For the entire crew, my broadcast partner, Rodney Ashby, I'm Greg Burton. Thanks so much for tuning in to Ram Replay.